here on Wish TV and ESPN Plus. And simply put, Brad, since making the move to the USL, the Indy 11 have never been better. It's It's been great. It's been very fun to watch. And you look at the standings. That's one thing. The goal differential separates things a little bit. And you look at how many of the one-goal victories they've had. They just don't give up goals. That's been the difference. No, nine clean sheets so far for the Indy 11 in 15 league matches. It was a clean sheet a year ago when the Indy 11 got their only league victory against Louisville City FC. It was the first of four times that these two rivals faced each other, and it felt like a rivalry from the get. It did. It's good to see that the Indiana-Kentucky rivalry transfers to soccer. Physicality was on display. So was the precision of Ioze. The game's only goal came on a penalty kick late in the contest, and it was not decided until the closing minutes. Indy getting the victory here at Lucas Oil Stadium on the first Saturday in May. But, of course, when they played in the playoffs, that victory went to Lou City by a score of four to one. Our starting lineups presented by Honda Manufacturing of Indiana, the official automotive sponsor of the Indy 11. Aliun Jahate gets a start for a second nine in a row, but Neville Hackshaw back in the lineup after playing for Trinidad and Tobago for the last three weeks. Well, for Jahate, when you score the game winner and then you come on and you, you start the next game and the team wins 3-0, that gives you the right to start again. For Louisville City FC, no Cameron Lancaster. He's in Nashville. No Ilya Illich. He's right here with the Indy 11, but still nine of those players on your screen featured for Lou City, if not last year, than in previous seasons. Yeah, and the impressive thing about Lou City is it's cookie cutter. They have a certain player they're looking for. If you fit that demographic, they can plug those pieces in without missing a beat. As always, we thank you for joining us for Indy 11 Soccer here on Wish TV and ESPN+. Plus. Indy off for two weeks after this match. They are trying to go into the break with their first ever six match winning streak. The streak of success is something that has been talked about by Indy 11 fans a great deal the last couple of weeks. We'll do some number comparisons as we go. But first, Magnus Rasmussen trying to slide that ball through to Niall McCabe. Couldn't complete the pass. And now Aliun Jahate uses that speed. And one thing we'll see from both these teams tonight, Brad, both are going to play three at the back. Yeah, and you look at the unpredictability that Aliun plays with. You know, defenders think that they can let a ball coast out of bounds or, or run back to their goalkeeper, but he chases everything, and he does it from unconventional angles. So it's something you've got to constantly be aware of. Speaking of goalkeepers, Jordan Farr again gets the starting nod. This is for a fourth consecutive game. That ball nervously somewhat rolling towards the goal line. He quickly sweeps it away. In for the injured Evan Newton, although Evan is in uniform tonight and is the backup if necessary. And the offside flag goes up against Lucas Farias for the first time tonight. Jordan, a second-year pro, the netminder for the Indy 11 from Tiny Corbin University in Salem, Oregon. Rasmussen plays the ball forward. Far was off his line. Mitch Osmond got to it first. That's a great read, and that's knowing the speed of Ownby because he has got pace, and you know we've seen it here every time we've played Lou City. He gets in behind very, very quickly, and so that's one you just can't hope that Jordan Farr gets to. Hackshaw does a great job of shielding Rasmussen away from the ball, and all the activity directed at Jordan Farr's 18-yard box so far. Throw in coming here for the Indy 11. You see Paolo Del Piccolo was the Louisville player featured on your screen. He was one of three players for Lou City who were player coaches for about a six week period last year. Pasher finds some space. Jahate is on side. Ina Bolton head towards the back post. No way to slide it through and pass her all the way on the opposite side of the pitch for Indy. And again, not as gifted with that right foot as he is his left. McCabe will buy some real estate before Hatshaw settles for the Indy 11. New look, Lou City is pressing every ball right now. Hatshaw makes a run forward. 
And frankly, Louisville should have the fresher legs. Indy played on Wednesday night. Louisville did not. They last played on Saturday a 1-1 draw against the Charlotte Independents. And many of these Indy 11 players are playing for a third time in eight days. Again, the good news for Indy, no travel involved. Everything has been here at Lucas Oil Stadium, and that certainly helps. Time now for our keys this match, brought to us by your Central Indiana Honda Dealers, official automotive sponsor of the Indy 11. Well, for, for Indy, um, you know, you're looking at a couple of things. Rasmussen's their leading scorer, and he's also a playmaker. And you've already seen early on the pace he plays with. You've got to make sure that they contain him, and they need to open up the field. The 11 in 1v1 and 2v2 situations is indefensible, so you got to spread out Loose City and make sure that they can't get their rotations quickly. For Lou City, you cannot leave Tyler Pasher and a defender on an island. You've got to have cover tucked in behind him and got to make sure that that defender has support. And Lou City has to do well converting in transition. That's been the only wrinkle that the Indy 11 have shown this season is that when they turn the ball over in midfield, you can kind of catch them and catch a look. But the back line and the goalkeepers have been solid and prevented it. But if Lou City can get those opportunities and convert, it's going to be a tough day for the 11. Good back pressure by Iosek. And now Pasher looking to spring free. Finds Jahate. Ina bolts it to his right. Jahate tries oh, to find ball. him. There's a touch there. Going down is Ina Bolson. It will be a corner. No further penalty heading towards Indy 11. That's a veteran ball from a young player. Yep. The early one was on to hit Ina Voltsen in front of the defender. He waited. He got the defender to bite. Ina Voltsen comes in a little bit further, and he tucks it in behind and gives a great scoring opportunity to the 11. Chris Hubbard, the new netminder this year for Louisville City. We reference the fact their scores have moved on from last year in Lancaster and Illich, but also Greg Ranjetsen, their longtime goalkeeper, now with former head coach James O'Connor in Orlando City in Major League Soccer. Hubbard, a Louisville native, makes the solid play. Flick back post. Oh, my goodness. And Jahate <laughs> rattles it off the woodwork. This team has been far better in terms of Indy in open play than they were a year ago, where they have not been as dangerous as on corners and set pieces. They certainly were there. Yeah, but I tell you what, I, this is a whole lot better brand of soccer than last year. We were just playing for restarts and, and opportunities there and, and getting very little scoring through the run of play. And, and it's been pretty much the opposite this season. The flick, Pasher's onside. Pasher, Hubbard it to the side and a second corner coming for the Indy 11 in the last couple of moments. We're six minutes in. That's two incredibly clever balls by Jahate and a ball off the post. And you set up Pasher on that lethal left foot. Hubbard, one of four different goalkeepers that have played for Louisville City this year. Quite the opposite from years gone by when Ren Jetsing owned that real estate between the posts. Ben Lute played more than anybody else, but he is out due to an ankle injury for Louisville. Some of the fans that made the trip up on I-65 trying to make some noise. And Jahate with a push in the back will draw the whistle from our match referee. Time now for our injury report brought to us by Community Health Sports Medicine, the official sports medicine provider of the Indy 11. Again, those injuries you see as far as questionable, two of them are in the lineup this evening. I still, we won't see Newton unless something happens to Farr. I'm not sure if we might see Ilya Illich tonight. Eugene Sterikov did not dress this evening, so we won't see him play. Again, he and Illich have both been out since the end of March. And if you can manage this game without having to get questionable guys you know in dangerous spots or get anybody injured you've got those two weeks yep. you should be able to roll into July healthy and ready to close out the middle part of the season that was the deciding factor in terms of who's playing tonight and who's not if there's anybody that is just a, the, the smallest bit injured don't dress them tonight sit for two weeks yeah, the only the only thing I think might be a wild card later in that game is Ilya Illich because of his connection with this club there's always a little bit of extra energy when you're playing against Ada your Bolson. former team. Pasher! Unbelievable. Tyler Pasher finds the back of the net. 
his seventh goal of the season. It was in minute seven on Wednesday, minute nine this evening. In the 11 strikes early yet again. Seven goals. He's got four game winners in the last month. And I don't know if video systems are broken in the league, but how does he continue to get opportunities? Splits the defenders. Pay close by. Swahi close by. Vir no one close enough. It's, it's virtually the same scenario as the early goal with Birmingham. A give and go at the top of the box. The defender lets Pasher go. You can't lose track of the hottest player in the league. He was on the bench for the team of the week last week. In other words, you know, top 11 players, and there's kind of a group that's next 12 through 18. Get the feeling that the coach of this team at USL headquarters might put him in the starting lineup <laughs> next week. Just How do you not? a guess. How do you not? Seven goals for Tyler Pasher. Six of them have come from May 18th onward. And Indy out to an early lead against their rivals to the south down I-65. Let's face it, as successful as the Indy 11 have been, over the course of these last two months, they have oftentimes done it with a late decisive goal or coming from behind. It's a bit of a different feel, getting an early lead. And you look at the goals that he scored, and they're they're not in the you know the normal kind of context of a game. They've been in the last 10 minutes, the first 10 minutes. And that's a jersey tuck against Taylor Pay. There is Martin Rennie in his second year as the head coach of the Indy 11. Not only the 33 points that the Indy 11 have, that is tied with Tampa Bay for the best in the entire league, let alone the Eastern Conference. Indy is the only team coming in tonight that has already won 10 matches this year. Wimets. Tyler Gibson. He knows what this rivalry is about from a different standpoint. Pasher was offside that time and immediately puts the thumb up to say thank you for the opportunity. Head coach John Hackworth for Louisville City. Can we reference the fact there were three player coaches for a brief stint of time for Louisville last year? This game has had to take frenetic pace. We haven't gotten much into storytelling yet tonight. Jimenez, who had 13 assists last year, plays it across for Ownby, up and over the bar. Goal kick coming for Indy. It's a great serve. That was in the only spot that Lou City could have had an opportunity from. This portion of tonight's match presented by Community Health Sports Medicine. Dream big, work hard, and finish strong. Potentially a turnover here, but Jahate couldn't get back to his feet in time to make really an effort at it. So again, John Hackworth had been coaching the U.S. under-17 team, had spent time as the head coach of the Philadelphia Union when he took the Louisville job in early August last year. In fact, he was named the head coach, I believe, on a Thursday. Indy Louisville played then on that Sunday. He didn't coach the team that week, but he was the head coach the last two times these teams played each other in October. James O'Connor had been the head coach for Louisville, got the Orlando City job at mid-year last year, and Louisville City had such respect for the guys in their locker room, they had three players as tri-coaches for six weeks, and they didn't miss a beat. No, and that, that speaks to, you know, not just their, uh, the, their organization, but kind of the, how they scout and look for players. You know, they've, they've got a template. They know what they want, and they go and they find those guys. And if you have the guys that fit what you're looking for, you can plug guys in and out without missing too many, you know, pieces that move on and move up. And oh, and Iose took two tumbles, not just one, but two. So Del Piccolo with the late one. It draws the ire of Iose, but it was the previous contact that drew the whistle from our match referee. Given the tenor and energy of this game so far, you would think this is the playoff matchup. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I think that's what happens with rivalry games is that, you know, and the fact that Lou City ended the 11th season last year, you know, the guys that were here remember it. There's certainly a lot of guys on this field that were a part of both of these organizations last year that feel it and remember it. Farhad Dodko is our referee tonight, by the way. And while there are more familiar names and faces from Louisville last year, this year, that say Indy to this year from last year, guys like Tyler Gibson and Kenny Walker, they felt that Louisville was a rival of theirs too, right. playing for <laughs> FC Cincinnati. I'm not sure if the phrase hate triangle has ever been used before, but it was that's the way those three towns well, you know, like and that. Louisville, Cincy, and Indy tend to feel about each other when they're all competing for the same thing. And that was so great, too, that Lou City and, and FC Cincinnati got to match up in the Open Cup. And we'll talk more about that coming up at halftime of tonight's broadcast. These two teams played four times last year, played three times in the regular season. And then they met in the 2-7 matchup in the Eastern Conference playoffs last year. That game won handily by Louisville. And if you want to call that night blustery, that would be a tremendous understatement. 40 to 50 mile an hour gusts at Slugger Field for that game last October 20th. And that was one of those crazy wins that it's against you in the first half, it's sideways in the second half, and you just can't get any kind of read on it. Pasher. Looking to launch things forward for the Indy 11. There's that speed down the left flank for Pasher. Ina Bolton wants it back post. Pasher went down to the 18, will not get the penalty call. Official Mealy said, nope, not enough there for a whistle. Davis, the fourth, the player, able to dislodge Pasher from the ball. Fan Select is the official ball supplier of the USL Championship in many of the finest leagues in the world. Since 1947, Select has been the leader in soccer ball quality and innovation. For the latest Select products and special offers, visit SelectSportAmerica.com. Louisville won that playoff matchup 4-1. They would go on to outscore their playoff opponents 12-2 in their run to a championship last year as that ball is across the touchline for yeah. a loose city and, throw in. And the 4 one's a bit deceptive. When you're in that, you know, win or go home mode, when you're down a goal, you're gonna, you gotta push guys forward. And so you open up a little bit more on the back line than those, you know, do or die moments. Pasher strips him, plays it forward for Jahate. Jahate races free, leaves it for Ina Bolson, and can't connect. Could have been two in the first 16 it, minutes. It, it's unbelievable. I mean, it, you take a look at scouting this team. The 11 could come at you from anywhere at any time. Here's a guy who bought his own way, his own plane ticket and hotel to the, the tryout, and he's in there and he's set. We're 16 minutes in, he's had three great playmaking opportunities. And the story on Ali and Jahate, you see Ina Bolton on your screen. Jahate made this team out of an open tryout. Not invited to tryout, an open tryout. That's incredible. And to be honest, folks, those are largely media events. That's a good way to get your brand out yep. there during the offseason. Good way for folks to feel they have a, a connection to the club. How about a guy that's produced a game winner for you out of yeah. an open tryout? Yeah, we talked about that to, to Martin after the game winner and said, you know, okay, you knew him. I mean, you knew he was coming to the trade. No, I had no idea who he was. Part of the way through the, the tryout, I went over and asked, who is this guy? You can show your Indy 11 pride and get your exclusive Indiana Members Credit Union Indy 11 debit card at any Indiana Members Credit Union branch or online at imcu.com today. These two played to a 2-2 draw in their first match of three in Louisville last year. From a pace and style of play, that's the only match from last year that kind of resembles this one. Ina Olsen flicks it forward. Jahate again. Pasher to his left. Jahate tries to find some space. Left foot. We've seen him be reluctant to go to that left the last yeah. couple of matches. 
given the ball he just hit, I wouldn't be. Yeah, and I tell you, I think, you know, the, the early ball the pass was on, that wasn't, you know, hit, and he did a great job of creating an opportunity for himself. And the one thing you ask as a goalkeeper and as a coach of your defenders, keep him, to, keep him there, keep him on the outside, make it a readable game. And, you know, here's a, a rookie that cuts the defender across his top foot. Davis trying to find McCabe, and Farr will let that go across the byline for a goal kick. Are you surprised to see Louisville leaving this much room available at the back? Yeah. It's, you know, I, you can certainly manage it with three backs, but you've got a couple pacey guys, so you need a couple of, you know, holding middle uh, guys in the center to maybe take up a little bit of space, jam it up, and help out. But right now, you got Jahate, who's, you know, almost had his way here in the middle of the field. Ida Voltson's had a good opportunity. Pasher's had a couple of good opportunities. Are we also seeing a difference in style? in terms of the way that kind of James O'Connor had built this team last year versus the way that John Hackworth wants to play going forward. Well, I think while you've got pieces that fit your culture, everybody brings a different toolbox to the you know, to the game. And so you do have to adjust how you're gonna play a little bit when you got a Lancaster that's out and an Ilya Illich that's out. That's what, 30 some goals last year that's missing. So you do have to play a little bit different when you've got that out of your lineup. And that is a foul in a dangerous area on Tyler Gibson. Masoso, the player that went to the turf for Lou City. And so a free kick coming from just outside of the 18. And I can see where, from the opposite side, where that looked like a foul yep. from, the, from the first angle we viewed it. But I also see Tyler's yep. point looking at it from the end zone camera. Jimenez and McCabe, the players that will stand over this free kick for Louisville. And you see Paolo Del Piccolo, one of those three tri coaches from last year, wearing the captain's armband. He has missed some time due to injury this year, appearing in just his seventh match of the season. McCabe from Dublin. It's Jimenez that sends it in. And there was a look. It missed wide. First and best opportunity of the night for Lucid. Per perfectly placed ball. That's a ball that's out of the keeper's range. He's got it. I mean, it's close enough that he's got to stay on his line and, and defend the line. But it's tucked right in behind the back line where, you know, if you've got an attacker who just outworks his defender to the ball, he's going to get a piece of it. Mitch Osmond got fouled, draws the whistle. This portion of this match is presented by the Indiana Economic Development Corporation. Indiana, a state that works. And Osmond getting the nod tonight. We saw Patty Barrett go down briefly in the win against Birmingham on Wednesday. And they just wanted to make sure that that ankle that he rolled was going to be okay a couple of weeks from now. So with that, Osmond got the nod over Barrett tonight with the return of Neville Hackshaw. Ina Voltson slides it forward for Pasher. Pasher back for Ina Voltson. The step to it by Del Piccolo, and Del Piccolo screaming at his teammates to pick up that runner. And I tell you, you know, missing Patty Barrett and Hackshaw coming back, things just sometimes work out where if he could have gone tonight, you're able to give him that rest and, and get him back 100% by the time you guys have to hit the field again. Remember, Alex Cronali is still with Columbus. He had been on a season-long loan with the Indy 11, but injuries in Columbus have kind of necessitated his return to the Major League Soccer side, and he has played well upon his return to Columbus. This Indy 11 team, the schedule you could say is somewhat light over the next few weeks. Iose, flag stays down. Able to cut that ball behind Davis. Indy will not have another midweek match until September at this juncture. They are off next weekend. They're also off the second weekend in August. And Ina Voltson got clobbered. Referee says play on, simultaneous contact. Pay able to.
to win that ball away. Flag goes up on Ownby as he tracks it down. Fans follow the Indy 11 and the rest of the USL Championship all season long on ESPN+. Plus. Home of the USL, MLS, UFC, and more. Join the over 2 million sports fans. Marty, you discovered ESPN+. Plus and watch the championship live every week. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com. Neville Hackshaw, the hair to match the game. Before he left for international duty, he really had probably been the, the player of the season for the Indy 11. Tyler Pasher may have wrested that moniker away at least momentarily. May. But Hackshaw was tremendous. You say it with more certainty is what you're telling yeah, me. Yeah, okay. I, I think it's... And, and that's nothing, no slight against Hackshaw, but Pasher's just been uh, in a different world. After one goal a season ago, Pasher now has seven. And Jahate's onside, trying to angle his body in front to go track that ball down. But well done by Paco Craig. That was well played. Craig, one of the many guys that seemingly has been in Louisville forever. And now Ownby gets in front of Wimet. Far retreats. It's going to be all Ownby. Wimet couldn't take the chance. Knocks the ball across the byline. Corner kick coming. Yeah, and these two teams built tonight very similarly. In 3-4-3, looking at some pace up top and trying to find the gaps in the seams. The 11 have been more effective in finding the space over the top. The ball through and the ball to feet just in front of the back three. But Lou City has shown that they can be dangerous with both Ownby and Rasmussen on those balls through. Jimenez, third in the league in assists last year. We'll send this in. Looking back post, got through. Jahate gets in the way before Ownby can rocket one. And now Hackshaw and Pasher not on the same page. But still, at least some time to organize for Indy. McKay, but looking back post and far will call everyone off and make the easy play. Cliff Bar Baking Company, Indianapolis, is proud to team up with the Indy 11 to provide meals to IPS students through our Meals for Miles program. And far has played some balls at his feet like he was a central mid tonight, hasn't he? Is that he can drive a ball? Not and just that, but with pressure on him, yeah, that and, seemed rattled by. And it's not floating it into space and hoping. I mean, he's looking to send Pasher and Jahate in. I had the chance to talk to Jordan this week for Soccer Saturday on 107.5 FM and 1070 The Fan. And I have learned, Brad, we are very popular with the Farr family. <laughs> They're big fans of Good. ours. Good to hear. They're watching out in Oregon via ESPN Plus tonight. Minute number 26, and Jahate draws the foul. He just makes it so difficult. He just, it's his work rate, his energy, his unpredictability, makes it a tough read. Dane Kelly is available as a substitution. Of course, the all-time leading goal score in the history of the OSL championship in Dane Kelly. Ina Boltson, good ball for Farias. Farias, an assist on Wednesday on that first Pasher goal. Connects with him yet again. Flag goes up. Farias apparently was in an offside location as that ball was played back to him. The native of Sao Paulo, Brazil, first time playing outside of his home country when he was signed by the Indy 11 during the offseason. Farias getting just his fifth start of the year. Again, that's been part of this theme of this June. Not just the overall excellence for the Indy 11. It's been guys that are kind of death players that's been getting it done this month. Yeah, and, and you look at how this game is, is matching up a little bit differently than how the 11 played on, on Wednesday in that you're seeing Pasher and Ida Voltsen. Ida Voltsen tucks into the middle a little bit more, but you've seen Pasher come across the top of the box a couple times. That's opening up the flanks for both Farias and Iose. Being the left foot dominant player that he is in Pasher, I've never seen him play this much on the right side as we've seen tonight. 
Rasmussen here, the leading goal scorer for Louisville this year. Good ball. Finds McCabe, couldn't get it through. Osmond, right man, right place, right time for Indy. As a, as a well, as it was only the size of the soccer ball of a window for Rasmussen to put that ball, and he hit it. You see Farr had to come in. The 20-minute mark of the U.S. Open Cup victory for the Indy 11 as Jaate draws the foul. Far twice is it to come in as an in-match replacement this year. One in Open Cup play, the other in the victory at Memphis 901 three weeks ago. But every time his name has been called, he has been outstanding. When you look at uh a rookie keeper getting their first professional minutes you're always wondering okay you, you know you're athletic you've shown it in practice now you got to do it on the big stage um, it takes a while to kind of get your feet underneath you he's there he's there these game I mean, he comes out he's playing like a veteran he's calm he's composed you can tell by the way the back line plays in front of him they're comfortable Paco Craig shown a yellow, and as you can tell from the various points, accumulation, a foul here, a foul here, a foul there. And so first yellow match goes to Paco Craig. The oft, or the off-timed arm that got into the midsection of Ali Jahate, the reason for the last infraction. And it's somewhat surprising that Paco would be off timing on something since his father was the basis for Culture Club. You would think his timing would be a bit more natural. Rank straw? That's brilliant. I'm going to let that breathe for a little bit. <laughs> I'm just sitting here soaking in your awesomeness. I thought about one to drop a line like, do you really want to hurt me? I thought that would be too much. Just go with the timing This, this thing. one was absolutely perfect. Well, once we get the pop culture reference out of the way, Paco is an outstanding player. One of the many key pieces that are kind of bedrock foundational pieces for this Loose City Club. Absolutely. Absolutely. I get nine players in the starting 11 back from last year, and most of these players, two, three, four-year pieces in Louisville. Only their goalkeeper and Chris Hubbard. And uh, Taylor Pay, as well as Napo Masoso. So eight pieces back in the starting 11 that saw significant minutes a season ago. Yeah, and that, that speaks so well to both the player and the organization, is that they want to be together. Now, these seasons are long. You're, he's, you're training, you're going at each other. There's so many ways that the locker room can become fractured and you know, egos can get involved and, and emotions can get involved and guys don't want to play with this guy. And so when you get an organization that can keep guys together, that speaks volumes to how well it's run. So Jahate will be waved back on at some point. So set piece coming, but playing a man down. It's Ioze that will send it in. Looking oh, back post ball. for Hatshaw and just couldn't time it out. What a ball. Just floated up there. Just go get it. Would not have mattered because the offside flag was up. Jahate is waved back in. We'll take another look. So even if he had gotten to it, it was deemed he was offside. By the way, this portion of this match brought to us by Honda Manufacturing of Indiana, official automotive sponsor of the Indy 11. Own be the target. Osmond with him step for step. And here's George Davis the fourth. Was Davis still Piccolo and a gentleman I'm sure we'll see off the bench tonight for Louisville and Luke Spencer. Those were those three player coaches during the midway stretch of the year. Osmond, another fantastic read for Indy. And doesn't just play the ball to the side, gives his guy in Jahate a chance to go get it, which then forces a throw in for Indy. And, and here's one of those silent moments of the game. You have Ioze on this last time that Lou City was breaking out. You have Ioze stepping up to press the ball. And when he does that, Pasher immediately, when he sees Ioze making that defensive pressing run, 
Passer immediately starts making his run back in recovery. That is a team that is completely in sync. Those are little invisible, silent moments that happen out here that if guys aren't locked in and, and, and really understanding each other's games, those things don't happen. He's just joining us, Tyler Passer, his seventh goal of the season, coming in minute number eight. And Neil Evans had a couple of good chances since then. Louisville's had one off of a set piece that couldn't find the back post. First 10, 50 minutes seemingly belong to Indy. It's been a bit more level since then. But a one goal advantage for Indy. Looking for their sixth consecutive victory. Their 11th win in total of the season. And trying to stretch the distance between themselves and the two-time defending USL Cup champions. Indy and Tampa Bay currently tied for first in the Eastern Conference at 33 points. Louisville eight points back and they have played one more match that has Indy to this juncture. This is the halfway point of the season for Louisville after tonight. Indy won't hit that until two weeks from now against Hartford Athletic. And a foul call from a few paces earlier. Not sure if that was a foul or maybe an inadvertent handball either way. Stoppage opportunity here for the Indy 11. Pasher. What a turn. And brings Pay all the way out from the back line, trying to chase him. It's too much traffic that time for Pasher to get through. Own be able to keep that ball in play. It is a throw in now for Louisville. Fans, you can tune to ESPN3 on Wednesday, 11 o'clock Eastern time for the next edition of Wednesday Night Soccer. Watch two of the best clubs out west duel for playoff positioning when Sacramento Republic FC welcomes Fresno FC in the Highway 99 Derby. Catch all the action this Wednesday at 11 o'clock on ESPN3. You're not working the next day. Stay up late and watch a little Wednesday Night Soccer. Memory serves the match, the return match between these two teams will be the featured match that week also on ESPN3 when Indy plays at Louisville as the offside flag goes up yet again on Friday night, August 30th at Slugger Field. If memory serves, I, I rake you never, you've never forgotten a thing. As I tell you, say it convincingly, people will believe you. Yeah, but you're also right, because I do, that's one thing I do remember, is that that's when they play again. You and I will have the chance to broadcast that locally here Love in the it. Indianapolis area. I'll take you down to the Slugger Museum down the street, showing me Muhammad Ali's place. Love that. I, I like the way, you know, when you drive through downtown Louisville and they've got kind of the, these big wall murals of all the iconic personalities that have come out of Louisville. That's a really cool thing. When you go west on I-64 to where I'm from in Lanesville, it's the same thing. There's, there's well, <laughs> I painted a likeness of myself on a great side. On the, on the quickie mark? Yeah, I tried. <laughs> We just got a Dollar General, by the way, this year. Jahante gets to it, lifts it up and over, but oh just sends it wide. He, he is ridiculously dangerous. Everything's working for him. A fraction away from being a two-goal advantage for Indy. And that's a foul against Carl Wimet. As you are watching the replay, there was a foul close to midfield as we met McCabe collided. So you, you saw the uh, a veteran ball from Aliun to Ina Voltsen early on. Just had another veteran move right there as this foul was called and, and being set up. He, he jogs over, stands in front of the ball to allow the rest of his players to get back and get organized. Alexi Swahi, the ball at his feet for Louisville. And now Paco Craig. It was Craig that had a handball inside of the 18 that created the penalty opportunity when Indy beat Louisville last May. A penalty converted by Ioze, one of his four goals a season ago for Indy.
Rasmussen. Walker ties him up. Rasmussen leading goal scorer this year for Louisville with six. And Farias. That ball was tended for Jimenez. And right now the play for the Indy 11. Forget the buildup. Throw it long and let Jahate go track yeah, it and down. I tell you, that, was, that was a great play by Kenny Walker just to hold up Rasmussen enough that Tyler Gibson could tuck underneath and be there for when Rasmussen spun. Fans, we hope you listen to Soccer Saturday every week on 107.5 FM and 1070 The Fan. Jordan Farr, a guest this week on the show, as was Indy 11 head coach Martin Running. And we talk Women's World Cup with Kat Whitehill. She had 134 caps for the U.S. Women's National Team and has been covering the Women's World Cup for Fox. That's all available if you go online now at 1070thefan.com. By the way, the Indy 11 are teaming up with the Indiana Fever for a watch party on Tuesday afternoon at Bankers Life Fieldhouse. Foul against Jahate. Three o'clock is the game against England in the semifinals. No charge. Doors open at 2.30. So looking for a big screen. Bankers Life has that. What a great idea. Looking for air conditioning. They got plenty of that too. So Tuesday, 3 o'clock, Bankers Life Fieldhouse. Jimenez. Oh, good ball. Again, third in the league last year in assists. Manu Ledesma now playing in Major League Soccer for FC Cincinnati. was first a year ago at 15. Jimenez, including regular season and playoff matches, featured 35 times last year for Louisville City. Much like a large number of this Louisville roster, as far plays the turf perfectly and elevates to get that one over Ownby. And you can see as the, as the 11 were pushing that back line high, you know, he knows the pace of Ownby, and so he is inching off his line to the 6, to the 12, just to be in position to pick off that ball that's hit over the top. Final five minutes plus stoppage time of half number one, brought to us by your Central Indiana Honda Dealers, official automotive sponsor of the Indy 11. That's going to be a foul against Ina Voltson for making contact while McCabe was up in the air. Thomas rather not plussed about the decision. We haven't seen any punches of the turf yet from Thomas nope. tonight. No. Nope. And Jimenez is almost going to treat this ball as a free kick in terms of maybe an opportunity on goal. Now they'll Try to restart, catch Indy napping if they can. Headed, and Farr was up to the challenge. It was Paco Craig that got his head to it. There's Jahate again, trying to split the center backs. Jahate got his first league start for the Indy 11 on Wednesday night. This is his 11th appearance of the season for the native of Senegal. Craig did just enough to get in the passing lane that time. And then Gibson commits the foul. Well, clearly Louisville has stabilized things just a bit from the opening. 10, 15 minute flurry that we saw from Indy. You see John Hackworth on screen. What's right now his message to his guys at halftime? Well, they came out with a lot of pace and a lot of pressure, and they were looking to try and grab the energy of this game early. It backfired a little bit when Pasher put that ball away. So now that the game has settled into this flavor, you know, it's, it's still trying to look for balls that Ownby and Rasmussen can get on the other end of. Rasmussen, a longtime member of this Louisville City roster, did spend one year back in his native Denmark playing in the third division. Had eight goals a few seasons ago for Loose City. Because of guys like Lancaster, a bit of a giveaway there by Iose, and an awfully creative way to find 25 yards of real estate. 
finish out on Rasmus and really kind of lost in the shuffle last year with Lancaster scoring 26 and Ilya Illich in double digits. But this year, much more of an opportunity and he's cashed in. Denmark well represented in tonight's game. Rasmussen for Louisville City. Ina Voldsen for the Indy 11. Brad Hodder, Danish by marriage. All the bases are covered. Got it all. Got to believe there's a couple of other Danes in the building right now. Ina Voldsen has quite a Danish contingent of fans. In fact, my, my wife belongs to a couple of uh, Danish Facebook groups. Um, and there's, they, uh, they come to the games, they, they support him. But the Danes are proud people, very proud people. Of course, Thomas got to play in a World Cup match for Denmark back in 2010. By the way, this portion of the match is also brought to us by the Indiana Economic Development Corporation. Take your business to the next level in a state that works. We did see a late goal in the first half for Indy on Wednesday. Jahate trying to do his best to make that happen again. Ina Boltz in the pressure. Second wave of pressure by Jose. Pays off. Ina Boltz in onside. Walker from distance. We've seen this before in multiple locales, not that time. Yeah, and I'll tell you, there is a, a little shirt tugging going on with Jahate and Pei. Pei is holding his shirt on every ball that's served in just to keep him close and negate his speed a little bit. Hopefully it's something that's on the radar of the center official. Jimenez. Final 30 seconds before we see the added time. Good switch of the attack here for Davis. Look at top of the 18, plays it behind Rasmussen. Jahate couldn't keep it at his feet, but finds a teammate. And I'll tell you, that ball from Del Piccolo to Davis cost them. He put it to him instead of in front of him. Pasher like a rocket. Could not find a teammate. Does find the corner flag. And our fourth official lets us know two minutes of added time before festivities are over at half number one. You got Pasher bearing down on you on your right side as a goalkeeper, and you're looking at this, and you've looked at film, and you've seen him beat two other goalkeepers near post, so you got to be frozen on that front side. But you've also seen him slot that ball over for, for game winners, so you know you got to have a mind in two worlds. It is Walker that will take this corner. Ball was checked by law enforcement. It appears to be okay. <laughs> That's brilliant. Walker, the team leader, and assists for the Indy 11 with four. Punched. Farias will settle. Pasher found an opening, just couldn't find a teammate. And Farias. Advantage being played. Would have been a foul. But possession maintained for Lou City. Halfway through out of time. And Farr is there. Able to make a relatively easy play. And Farias just kind of gets a bit of a knowing nod from the referee. I'm not sure if there's a card coming, but be a talking to at the end of the half. And Jahate being told to pop up, not enough there from a contact situation. Hackshaw. And that should be enough to end half number one. There will be a card that's gonna be shown to Lucas Farias. So I don't think we're done yet. Hang on a second. I think that was the first stoppage in play really to show that card. So Farias gets a yellow. So Craig a yellow for Louisville earlier. Farias now has one for Indy. That is his first yellow of the season. And now I would imagine one touch and this half should be over with. Not yet. So 
the card has produced a little extra time on the extra time. But finally, all out of time. In the 11, an early goal, and it's a one-goal lead heading to halftime. It's a well-played half. It's really a well-played half by both teams. I don't think Louisville's been quite as explosive in the attacking third, but a well-played game. A bit of a sluggish start. They've certainly brought it these last 30 minutes. You would expect nothing less in this rivalry affair. Indy looking for their 11th win of the season. One goal to get at halftime here on Wish TV and ESPN+. 